What's up guys, Gary here with self.dev. Today we are gonna talk about freelancing. I've had some people comment on videos saying, hey, how do I find freelance clients? How do I get into freelance? How do I, do you have any advice for me on this? So today we're gonna talk about how to find clients and advice for dealing with clients. First off, one way to find clients, Upwork or freelance sites. Personally, I would stay away from these. From my experience, most of the clients you're gonna find are people that want to just charge dirt cheap prices and get as much value out of you as they can, so they're not fun to work with. There are a few, you can find good clients on here, but it's pretty hard, and I think there are other avenues you could go down to find clients that are a lot easier and a lot, eff a lot less effortful than digging through freelance sites. But if you are gonna work on these, you, one thing is you do need to be selective. So you want to try and find people who are looking for value over price. Maybe people who are nervous about hiring a dev for the first time and you can establish that trust they need to hire you. Or people who are just like nervous about working with overseas teams. Um, basically just looking for people who know that if they want good work, they're gonna have to pay a little bit for it. So don't just look don't just try to be the lowest bidder on a job. Another thing, you need to niche down. So let's say somebody's looking for an app developer, you need to portray yourself in a way that you are a mobile app expert. Let's say you have like a brain tumor, are you gonna go to a general practitioner to solve your problems or are you gonna go to a neurosurgeon? You're gonna go to the neurosurgeon because it's a brain tumor and the neurosurgeon is gonna go know more about how to fix your brain tumor than a general practitioner. Same thing with dev. If you need a mobile app built, are you gonna to go to a front-end developer or are you going to go to a mobile app expert? You're probably gonna to go to an app developer versus the just general front-end developer. So pick a niche, you don't have to have just one, but if you're talking to an app client, show your app developer portfolio. If you're talking to an e-commerce client, show your e-commerce portfolio. So. That leads to another thing, you need to have a good portfolio. This isn't just for freelancing sites, this is for freelance in general. Having a solid portfolio goes a long way towards establishing your credibility, and that's a big thing with freelancing. You have to convey that you know what you're doing, that you can give them the value they expect, and that you can accomplish the tasks they need done. So having a good, well-designed portfolio helps a lot with that. If your design skills aren't the best, study design for a little bit. That'll pay off because you can then build a portfolio that looks good and you can design stuff for your clients that look good. If you don't study design, don't learn the principles of that, you might have to hire a designer to design your portfolio so it'll look good. And then you could also work with a designer on your freelance projects. Like maybe you find projects and you call him in to design the stuff. And if he finds projects, he calls you in to develop the projects. That's something I've kind of going on with uh, one of my clients. I went to a chess meetup and the guy who runs it is a designer. He's a freelance designer, uh, UX UI designer. And he tosses me some work whenever he's got front end stuff he needs done. And uh, yeah, having the, building those symbiotic relationships where you work with other people is a great way to get other clients too. And that kind of leads into another way to get clients. Just be social and live your life. Uh, if you live in a big city, get on meetup.com, find cool stuff that you like to do. Like I like to go hiking, I like to play chess, I'm into photography. So I join hiking, chess, photography meetups, go out and meet people. And if you just go out and be social, talk to people, build your social skills, you will inevitably find people who have a need for like a web developer or an app developer or like one of my friends in discord even i just play games with random people and his dad's a photographer and his dad needs his photography site redone so i'm probably going to do some freelance work for his dad just go out meet people and be social and you will inevitably find clients that way as long as you're a good web developer you have to have a good portfolio you have to have good work that you've done to show them so they know that you're a good developer but that to me is the easiest way to find clients through friends, family, meeting new people, that kind of thing. But freelance sites are an option if you wanna go that route. The third way you can find new clients is cold calling or cold emailing um, random businesses. Like I Googled kayaking, broken bow, and these are a few of the kayak rental places. I've actually gone to a lot of these places and rented kayak because I like to go kayaking. But these are a few of their websites. They kind of don't look great. This is probably the best one. They've just got this hamburger menu. They've actually got a little bit of JavaScript and a few animations and transitions. If you click on this, a form actually pops up. And even this site doesn't look that great. Like they've got these, this blog section here and there's a lot of missing 
stuff on the blog, or like a lot of the blog posts are missing images. So that, that doesn't even look that great. But this one, if we look at the bottom, last update was from May 5th, 2017, created or created and maintained by some random company, July 10th, 2008. So this is super dated. This is a picture. These aren't actual text. This is an actual text. This is an actual HTML. This is just an image. You can't click on the phone number here to call them. Um, these nav tabs over here, the transparency and like the opacity you know, makes them kind of hard to read. Um, I mean, there's just a lot of stuff you could do to improve this website. So I could call them and say, hey, I've used your service before. It was great. I'm a web, de web developer now. And I was looking at your website compared to some of your competitors. And I think there's a lot of improvements we can make as your manager around so I could talk to him about possibly revamping your website to help you improve and get more business. Um, and that's kind of another thing. You do want to make sure you're talking to a decision maker. You want to make sure you're trying to get in touch with the manager, not just some front desk worker who doesn't have the authority to give you like the website information. Because I mean, if the front desk guy is like, oh yeah, that's great, our website sucks. We totally need that redone. But he can't approve anything. Like what is that? What have you done? You need to convince the manager. You need to convince the decision maker, not some front desk guy. And then and they don't even have favicons here either. And then if we inspect this, like this is the mobile version of the site. Like it's not responsive at all. And then this, like the green and the red, the color scheme on that, oh my gosh. This is their homepage. Like there's a lot better way you could display this information here. So just Google local services that you have used or just go out and talk to random local businesses about redoing their website and you can find some people. You do have to develop some sales skills. So I'd probably read a few books on sales, um, watch a few YouTube videos on like how the sales process works. But if you can get that down, that is another skill that is gonna be very valuable to you throughout your life. Now, dealing with clients, um, I would say don't work for free. That is gonna devalue yourself. Also, like if I go up, if I come up to you and I say, hey, I'm gonna build you a website, it's gonna be free, but I need a review from you at the end. You're gonna feel pressure to give me a good review. You're not gonna be able to give me good, honest feedback. That's not great. You want good, honest feedback. You want a good, honest testimony that you can show on your website. So charge them something, even if it's just like a hundred bucks to redo their website, you could say, hey, I'm starting out, so I'll give you really cheap rate, just a hundred bucks to redo your website. But I would say at least charge something. And kind of with the charging stuff, try to get 50% up front, maybe not when you're just starting out, maybe when you're just starting out, build a website and then you get the cash. But after you're kind of established, make sure you start getting 50% of the project up front because you will have clients that kind of bail out mid in the middle of the project or you get near the end of the project and they're like, hey, this isn't working out. We're gonna have to call this off. You wanna at least have a little bit for the time you put into it. And speaking of getting towards the end of projects, make sure you have clearly defined goalposts of where the end of the project is. Um, you probably wanna set up some kind of contract with them. You don't wanna just say, hey, give me a hundred bucks and I will build you a website. Like, what does that mean? Um, are you gonna build them three pages, five pages? Is it gonna be responsive? Are you gonna set up their Google search console and Google My Business? Are you gonna help them with SEO and set up the form submission and hosting? Like, you need to draw the boundaries so they can't just come in and say, hey, I wanna add this page, this page, and this page. And all you said was, hey, I'll build you a website. So them coming to you and saying, hey, I wanna add these other pages, that kind of falls in that. You wanna be able to say, hey, that's not what we specified here. I'm happy to do this for you, but it's gonna cost a little bit of extra money. So you wanna have clearly defined boundaries. That's gonna make the experience a lot better for you and for the client as well, because you need to manage their expectations. And lastly, speaking of managing expectations, you want to under promise and over deliver. That is a big thing you wanna do with anything in life. Like even with photography, if I have a shoot set up, I will say, hey, we'll do two hours and you'll get 10 pictures and maybe we'll end up shooting for like two and a half, three hours and I'll give them 15, 20 pictures. You want to establish that goodwill and you want them to feel like, hey, they really got their money's worth from you. They really got value out of that experience. And that's gonna go a lot with, um, that's gonna go a long way with them referring other people to you. If they did some work with you and you gave them a little bit of extra for their money versus somebody who gave them the bare minimum for what they charged, and they have a friend that comes and says, hey, I really like your website, who did that? 
who are they going to refer them to? Are they going to refer them to the guy who did the bare minimum or are they going to refer them to you who did a little bit extra for them and made sure they were happy with the site? So under promise, over deliver, make sure customer service is a big deal. Um, and that's another reason you need to manage expectations properly. If you don't have those proper bound boundaries drawn, they could be expecting X and you give them Z and it's just not a good experience when it comes together. So hope this helps you out. If you thought this was helpful, give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below and I will try to do more stuff like this. Hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all the content I'm putting out. If you have any questions or anything like that, let me know in the comments below. We do have a Discord in the description if you wanna come hang out, talk tech, meet some other developers. And then I also have a site called selftaught-dev.com that's gonna be in the description. If you're an aspiring dev and need some practice projects to build, I've got a lot of Adobe XD mockups on here you can download and it comes with the desktop mock-up, a project demo video, and then a few requirements for the project. So with this clock, I've got a few specifications for it. Um, same thing with all the other, these other projects. So check that out if that's interesting to you. Uh, I think that's about it for this one. I will see you guys next time. Peace. One.